Okay, um, so my example I gave wasn't, you know, very, uh, what's the word, intense. This is full on, <laughs> I basically, um, some FPV footage that I need to credit the uh, author, um, and I shall do so. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see how the, let me just fade the camera so you can see it a bit better. Um, so I meta shaped, did, did a whole photo scan, basically the whole flight. Um, I wonder if I have, no, I don't have it open anymore. Um, I, yeah, did a photogrammetry model of the, the entire flight. Um, and if we just dissolve it down a bit, you'll see. That for the vast majority of it, it works. I mean, there's a few few things it doesn't work uh, where the camera wasn't solved properly, like up here, I think, seem to remember it goes a bit, you know, it's a bit lumpy in places. But, you know, you can re-topo it or... Um, I'd probably just re-topo it rather than go in with the sculpt and smooth out the lumps and bumps. You'll probably be... Here we go, here's where it goes, the camera breaks. Um, but for the, for the vast majority of it, it works, which is obviously this is great for visual effects, you know, because you can you have a whole environment here, and I've started doing like a retopo here, you know, and you can do the high high poly to low poly bake, uh, you know, get all the do do a low res retopo, lay out all UV, UVs really nice, and then presumably bake from the high res, so you get all the lovely textures. Um, and everything uh, but I just wanted to just kind of show that you know it does work um, and let's go and just I'll generate the motion path uh, was it zero 1700 or something okay so this is the actual flight path of the drone um, and that's looking pretty good. I mean, there's a few times it stuffs up, like up here, so it's like a dive or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is quite robust. I mean, it's not going to work every time for everything, but I think, you know, because it's an automated process, you can just leave it going and then review it um, to check that it works. And then you see the little camera whizzing along. There's a few cuts and things in it, so it sort of jumps around. Um... But yeah, I mean, I've been trying to do this technique for ages, a way of, you know, getting real world environments into game engines from, you know, FPV drone stuff. And um, it's quite fortunate with this video in that it's shot in the perspective mode where it takes all the lens distortion. If you're shooting like super view, which most FPV people do, you're into a whole world of pain because of the distortion. And it's not like a normal distortion, it's a special GoPro distortion. Um, you know, which makes things look dramatic, but makes it very difficult to track. I mean, I've shot lens, but it's just really difficult to get the distortion out to this kind of, um, what they would call rectilinear um, type of distortion, where all the lines are straight. You can see all the lines are straight. And why it needs to be straight, because there's no way OpenGL can do this, you know, in, in a 3D program and do the distortion as well, you know, and have good interactivity. So you have to kind of, but yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to show that it does work. Maybe the example I gave was, wasn't very clear or, you know, didn't look great. And you're thinking, well, why would I bother doing that? The, the end result looks terrible. You can get really nice results. Um, I mean, this is optimal in terms of the distortion issue. Um, but yeah, if you can, you can see here with the, um, it's not perfect here, but maybe we wouldn't want to project the textures at this point because they're really foreshortened. Maybe we want to project it at another point in the sequence. So you would have to go through and try and get the bits where it's like flat on, like here, that, you know, get a good, um, I mean, it's only 4K, um, but you know, game engines can't really, you know, if that was like, one of those squares was 10, uh, you know, 1024 or 248 to, you know, 2048, or, you know, I think 1020, but you know, you get the general idea. Um, I just thought I wanted to show that an example that worked really well 
and just kind of show the power of this or you know potential of this method on something an example that works i'm using meta shape and you need to split the video into a jpeg or png sequence it does support um exr and float and 16-bit color and all the rest of it a uh, meta shape but um pngs is good because you can put an alpha channel in there should you have letterboxing or other motion that's not consistent to how the camera's moving like cars or people or something you need to cut out but i for this i just didn't bother i just exported the the sequence uh, as a i think a jpeg sequence and just left the people in there because they're sort of moving around quickly so i thought it wouldn't really throw it throw the um solving right so basically you go workflow add folder find the folder um of, of your of the pictures and then you go align photos that will be switched off initially i normally go uh, with highest and i found that estimated seemed to work i mean it's worth trying both if it's just a simple move to try a sequential but if it's complex and there's different cuts and stuff estimated is better because it kind of cross references stuff so you do that and then you'll end up with a a low res point cloud like this and a load of cameras uh which should show up like this um and um and that's enough uh, you can export the cameras export cameras out as a chan file which is like a nuke motion file uh, which for cameras or axes or empties or nulls or like or for whatever transforms you know an object moving in xyz and with rotation um, but it also supports the camera information as well so export that out as a chan file and then we'll have an animated camera that we can load into blender um, or you know the thing is you can export all the cameras out as individual cameras but there's like 1700 frames so it's like 1700 cameras so that's a lot of cameras with each with their own texture it's easy just to have one animated camera which is the whole reason why i'm explaining this process with a, an animated texture on it in the 3d program um so anyway you um but just stepping through this program meta shape so once you've built once you've aligned the photos you end up with a do you then need to build uh, ben, a dense point cloud. And I usually go for either medium or high. Ultra high is a bit insane and takes forever. I mean, like several hours, um, possibly days. <laughs> um, it depends a bit on how high the resolution of the pictures are, what color depth they are, and how many frames there are. But for this, because there are so many frames, I went with medium, and that will then generate a point cloud like so. Okay, which you can see. Um, and then what I do is then go build mesh and I would go again just leave it with medium if you just leave it at the default settings so if you've done a, a high point cloud it will come in and say do you want to do a high but I'm just going with medium because it, there's a lot of a lot of um, uh, a lot of images here um, and then you'll end up with a model like so um, and um, then uh, what I'll do is um, I tend to trim off the excess and I'll export the model out as an OBJ file export OBJ and then in another program maybe like Blender or ZBrush or something export model um, just chop out all the bits because you see we've got a lot of we've got a lot of all this these this stuff going on and so there would be no point assigning a UV because the next thing to do is the textures and it needs to create a UV map and if it's UV mapping loads of rubbish that you're going to get rid of anyway you're just wasting texture space so I would suggest cleaning the model uh, maybe just select the main chunk and chuck away all the bits that aren't connected um, is an option I mean this is the, the best thing you ideally you'd re apologize this model um, you know, export the model out as is re apologize the model in another program do the UV layout in another program and then take that back into the meta shape and do the projection here um, and then you're you're getting like your maximum texture resolution for, for the model that you've got so anyway once you've done that um, you once you've exported the model cleaned it up or done a retopo re-imported the model you then um, you can then do a texture bake so you go workflow build texture 
I went with four 8K tiles. If it's going in the game engine, you really probably would it would be better off doing maybe smaller textures like 2K, 2048, um, and have maybe like 10 tiles or 20 tiles or something, as opposed to a few really large ones, or maybe even 4K. It depends a little bit what, what platform you're doing. If you're if you're going for like something like the Oculus Quest or something, which is like mobile hardware, it was it was recommended that it, it seemed to recommend that one or a few high res maps work better um, than many small resolution uh, maps. But if it's on a desktop PC or you know Mac or whatever, then you've got a bit more grunt then. Um, but anyway, for this example, I went with um, I went with uh, four 8K textures, and I left thing to generic mapping. And you just want to do the diffuse and yeah use the images for the um yeah use the images for the for the actual text projection you can actually use the the dense point cloud because you know that you saw that it was colored there you see so anyway export the thing out inside the cameras i mean that do the generate tech and you see it does a pretty good job i mean i mean yeah it's if you get super close it's going to get a bit ch chunky but it's not bad um and if the model was a bit nicer i i would be pretty happy with this um but the models it is a bit it's a bit uh lumpy in places and stuff but yeah i mean it's kind of cool isn't it it works that way so anyway that's that is how you do the the photogrammetry part and this is as you can see with a 30 or 26 day trial of agisoft so i can highly recommend go out and try it on your drone footage and it works best on sort of wide angle 24 mil equivalent stuff um with which has got um i mean the gopro has the rectilinear mode um which is works better i found uh, you've got to remove the distortion it will certainly won't work with super view footage because the distortion is just too insane um i mean i've tried to remove the distortion super view distortion before but it's 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 really difficult i mean i, I guess i you know i need to properly shoot a grid and I don't I don't know if it's actually possible to get it to work I, I've struggled with superview so if you want to try this I would recommend using the rectilinear mode unfortunately that does affect the, how the footage looks but it just it just works better for, for, for photogrammetry rectilinear images than fisheye stuff because it's just especially as I say the superview stuff is a bit insane so that is the photogrammetry segment over